Ya, ya tadi. Di di dari Pak Tau. Eh, saya punya ya. Oh, alam si wape ke sang tu tak ada. Tu okey. Ni hoy ta. Hoy ya la. Hoy. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Maida. Welcome on this uh, fifth Sunday after the resurrection. Uh, you know, we are. This is a season in which we are transitioning from one liturgical season to another, from the season of resurrection Easter to the season of Pentecost, which is coming up. I believe in the second week of June, or second or third week of June. Um, so, in which the, in the Pentecost is time when the Spirit comes to the church, and and each time that we are gathered, we are gathered by the Spirit as well. So, friends, let us, as we come to worship this morning, let us invite the Holy Spirit to be amongst us, just as the Holy Spirit has guided you into this place. And in, the, in this time, so friends, let us join our hearts and our mind for the worship of God. Please join me for the call to worship by responding in the yellow portion. God is our rock and our refuge. Nothing can shake me from God's steadfast love. Our God 
is a fortress of justice. No weapons or oppressions can loosen a single brick. Come, let us offer ourselves as spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, the great architect, designed a world where no one is left out. You established Jesus as the cornerstone for a temple where the Holy Spirit roams freely, going forth to all people. We design our churches and nations to imitate your heavenly temple, where there is no center and no margin, beginning by redesigning our hearts as we worship you on this day. Amen. For the hymns, I, I, I ask that the please uh, wait till I make the hand signal so you can all stand at the same time, okay? Our opening hymn is number 624, I greet thee whom I sure redeemer art. not be put to shame, as scripture reminds us. Confidence in this promise, let us confess our sins before God and one another. 
Let us pray the prayer of confession in unison. Almighty God, your word offers freedom from sin, but we confess that we have not obeyed your word. We have harbored malice towards our enemies. We have been deceitful in our relationships. We have been insecure, insincere in our commitment. Through gossip, we have slandered our friends. Forgive us our sins and lead us to genuine repentance. Help your children long for your pure, spiritual meal that we may grow into the joy of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, once we were not a people, but now we are God's people. Once we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be Friends, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give what the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Friends, let us share this peace of Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with our brothers and sisters. Let us turn to our neighbors and share the sign of peace to one another. Our first scripture reading today comes from the letter of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 2 to 10. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 2 to 10. Listen to the word of God. Like newborn infants, Long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scriptures, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. 
For once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. And once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me, Jesus said. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Then, Jesus, then Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe because that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? But the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe in me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. Before I begin, I, I want to share this image that I came across. Uh, it's related to our message today. Um, it, it, the, the title of this image is Chosen by God, and it has this uh, fingerprint, right? I think, I don't know which finger is the thumbprint, whatever. Uh, I think this really speaks to us as to who we are, that we bear the, the imprints of God. We're all uniquely different. We, we all have different fingerprints, but yet we are all called to be together as God's children. So I just want us to have this image in our head as we uh, meditate on our words this morning. When was the last time that you've been selected or chosen to be a part of a, a group or elite company? Whether it's for work or you, know, you were at a school that you, you were chosen to join a special varsity team or um, sports team or be a, you know, chosen to be on a special performance. I remember when I was in school, I, I, I was chosen to, to join the 
a musical play in, in Chipset Bay, and and I never made it to any sports team, so count me out. Or, or, or you've been chosen to, to win some scholarship or prestigious scholarship or award. Or how about you get this every day that you get this special pre qualified uh, e uh, pre qualified mailing that you receive this special credit card that you are pre qualified for? How did you feel? How did you feel that when you get this special offer? Now, obviously, you know that the latter case is just a sales pitch, like a propaganda or a spam that we don't have to get too excited over. But when we do get recognized by someone for our achievement or personal accomplishment, it does make us feel good, make us feel proud and encouraged and appreciated for what we have accomplished. Something that we work so hard for and that did not go in vain. People finally take notice of our unique gifts, talents, and abilities. And it does boost our self-confidence and self-worthiness, doesn't it? And as our text earlier that we read reminded us that however unworthy as it may seem, by the grace of God, we have been chosen to be on God's team. We're all pre-qualified for this special offer. God has claimed us as God's people without doing anything. We don't have to earn it because God has already given it to us. We are special and privileged and honored and worthy in God's sight to be called sons and daughters of God. How blessed are we to be on the same team as God and be able to share this privilege with others. For those of you who watched the coronations of King Charles III yesterday, we also witnessed a tradition that had run for hundreds of years in the history of that country in England. But it's also very biblical in accordance to the traditions and the rituals of the nation for crowning a king. Many of the, uh, the, the ceremony, a part of the ceremonies are very biblical, such as the anointing. And uh, it, 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 we, we can read, read that in the anointing of the king. To serve as a king to the people, it is a special calling. He is chosen to not only to serve God's people, but also to serve God, first and foremost. It's also a special calling for humility to be a humble servant. I like that part when, um, when they ask him, uh, the, the uh, King Charles, uh, to be the servant of God's people. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. That's biblical. I look back into in my teenage years, in my 20s, I used to play softball at the park on Bedford Avenue and Avenue uh, between X and Y. Even though it was just a pickup softball game, we, we did play pretty competitively. But most importantly, we play for fun. And we built up this camaraderie and friendship that we have over the years. Sometimes I feel I'm sort of an outsider because at times I didn't feel I was did quite fit in with the rest of the guys. Some of them are in the 60s and 70s, but we just had fun. I remember how I started when I, one Saturday morning, I just rode my bike and they were looking for an extra player and asked me if I wanted to play. I didn't even have my glove on and I started to play with them. That's, his, that's how it all started. 
But later on, I found out even one of the players was my junior high school social study teacher. But those guys make me feel as part of them. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time, and they chose me. They picked me up to be on their team. They gave me a sense of belonging to be on the same team as them. Even though I may be the last person to be selected on the team or batted last in the batting order, that's okay. I had my shining moments from time to time and I could care less because I had fun. But it does feel good to be chosen and being wanted and appreciated. And there's no shame to be on the same team playing the same game. That there's no shame to be the last person on the team. Because once we're on the field, we're all in the same team together. It takes all nine and 10 of us in order to win. Come to think of it, it's kind of like a like the church. It's kind of like a pickup softball team. All of us have different journeys and walks of life that we come in and we have different skills and talents that we are waiting to contribute. Whether we are the first player on a team or being picked the last, it's okay to be the last one chosen as long as you're on the same team. It's okay to be the last in the batting order because all the leadoff batters only usually bat lead off once in a game. In the passage that we read earlier from Peter, from Peter's letter to the early church, we read that the community was wrestling with this issues of self-identity, a sense of who they were and whose they were. Who did they belong to? Do they see themselves as a team of individuals together as one team or as individual teams of their own? Many of these early Christians were also faced with various trials and persecutions under the oppressive Roman regime. Despite the many challenges that they faced, they were willing to stand up for what they believe in, simply because of their faith. Both their faith integrity and their allegiance in Christ were being challenged from time to time. For some, this is even a life and death situation. They were, but they were willing to put their lives at their own risk. If we were presented with similar situations today at the early church, how would we feel? What would we choose? Are we willing to choose Christ first and above all things, even to a point of risking our lives? Keep in mind that, that it is by grace that God first chose us and not the other way around. We don't get to choose God. God has already chosen us. We were God's first choice, first pick in the order. Even to a point that God was willing to surrender God's only son so that we may live abundantly according to God's blessing. We do, however, bear this imprint of God in all that we do and in all that we say. Just pause to think of that for a moment, that we bear this image of God. Whenever you look at the mirror, what do you see? We bear the image of God. When we speak, when we act, we bear the image of God. We are specially chosen as God's servants and as God's witnesses. 
just as we've been studying for those of us on the in the Bible studies, we've been studying the book of Ecclesiastes. The writer King Solomon was looking back into his life, of the life that he has lived thus far, contemplating the meaning and the purpose of our living. How everything seemed like a vanity at times, a chasing after the wind, chasing after this elusive dream. Come to think of it, how many of us today may also find ourselves wrestling with the very same question, searching for meaning and purpose in life of who we are and whose we are. Do we see ourselves as individual members of the body of Christ or as chosen people of God who give us who gives us new life and new hope in the midst of our everyday trials we call life. Feeling abandoned and rejected, at times we might feel like we are the last player to be chosen on the team. We are chosen because there were no other choices. You're the last person. All right, we'll take you in. We become more of a, a liability for failure rather than a contributing asset to the overall success of the team. But we shouldn't feel that way. Just as those early Christians who were chosen to be on God's team because of their, they were chosen because of, not because of their own abilities, but because God saw the potentials within them. They were chosen by God to be on the same team, working towards the common goal, working towards a common vision of God's mission and purpose. Unfortunately, in our individualistic society that we live today, it is a very easy for us to focus our, all of our attention upon ourselves on neglecting the needs of others, the independence of, the interdependence of others, that we need each other, we need to support one another. We stick an eye in between the word team. When God calls us to share our gifts, to call others into our lives, he calls others to partner with us and to support us. The Holy Spirit will go before us in the company of the other fellow believers. And will continue to lead us, the Holy Spirit promised to lead us and intercede for us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work together intricately as a team, just as we are being called to work together intercollectively as a team as well. As we read in our gospel reading from John earlier, John offered us a glimpse of how the unity of the Chuanyun God worked. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they worked synchronously with one another to perform various roles and capacities. But one is three and three in one. As Jesus declared to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So believe in him. Believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. This sense of Assurance, bolden our faith and courage and the rest of the disciples as we carry on this mission of Christ that has entrusted to us through our calling, through our service, and through our ministry for others. We are no longer our own, but as God's chosen.
the Apostle Peter reminded us that Christ as a chosen and precious cornerstone. He was rejected by others and causing those who were disobedient to stumble and fall. As a church, God has chosen us to be God's people. But we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. In order that we may proclaim the mighty acts of God who called us out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. This is one of my favorite uh, verses. Chosen race, royal priesthood. Think of each phrase, what it means for us personally. Christ gave us the abilities and the strength to do all things through God's power. One of the key aspects of the reform, the art theologian of John Calvin, was that according to Calvin, the foundations of one's Christian life is that we are all in a constant relationship with God at every moment and in every place. No matter what, we are never too far away out of sight from God. And as we read last week, we are never too far out of the calling voice of the great shepherd. God is ever present around us and within us. Wherever we go, we bear the witness of God's presence while making a difference in the lives of others. In his famous Institute of Christian Religion, John Calvin beautifully described our relationship with God as follows, quote, We are not our own, let not our reason nor our will. Therefore, sway our plans or deeds. We are not our own. Let us therefore not set it as our goal to seek what is expedient for us according to the flesh. We are not our own, insofar as we can. Let us therefore forget ourselves and all that is ours. Conversely, we are God's. Let us therefore live for him and die for him. We are God's. Let us let his wisdom and will therefore rule all of our actions. We are God's, all the parts of our life according, all the parts of our life accordingly strive towards Him as our own lawful goal. Indeed, as Peter reminded us today, that once we were like a newborn infant yearning for the spiritual milk, and now we are taking now that we have tasted that the Lord is good. But we can't drink milk forever. We need to chew on some solid food eventually. But once we were not a people, but now we are God's people. Once we have not received mercy, but now we have received God's mercy. Friends, life is but full of many choices. Our lives are dependent upon choices that we make or we fail to make. Not only for the benefits of ourselves, but for those around us as well. We believe in a God who is sovereign, faithful, and just. And we come to our humble senses that we do not ultimately choose God. But rather, God has already chosen us. And we respond to God's choosing and God's grace through our faithful obedience by proclaiming the good news and providing service to others. By the virtue of our baptism, we are chosen by God as God's sons and daughters. And later on, as we come before the Lord's table, 
may the signs and symbols of God's covenant made before us awaken our senses to remind us that we are ultimately not our own, but as God's chosen. Through God's grace, God assures us that we will never be left alone or forsaken. Whoever believes in him will never be put to shame. Friends, this is our ultimate joy and our greatest hope. As the chosen people of God, we strive to live faithfully each day by honoring and fulfilling God's promises in our lives and by planting seeds in the lives of others. Christ has promised that he will do whatever he asks, whatever we ask in his name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Thanks be to God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, just bear with me for a moment. Friends, let us now respond by singing hymn number 724. Oh, Jesus, I have promised. Oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee, be thou where my master and my friend, I shall fear the battle. If thou wast by my side, what the from the pathway, if thou wilt be my guide, oh, let me feel thee, feel me, the world is sacred for thee. I see the sight that that so that hand takes down thy ear. My foes are ever near me. Oh, well, be at with thee. The Lord of me. Then chill my soul from sin. Oh, let me hear thee speaking in heaven, sing and sing. From the songs of heaven, 
good self, good, birth of self with all things we got so deep and all cause go of sin and maybe now body and of my soul. O Jesus, thou hast promised all that we are we thy fervent and Jesus, I have promised to serve the king. Oh, the all my master and my friend. Amen. Please be seated. Now is the time they will do a little check in with one another. If you have any prayer of thanksgiving, joys, or prayer of concerns that you may lift it up and share with others. Um, let me first grab my pad first. Any? Yes, Margaret. I think there was an incident in Atlanta this week too, right? Uh, a shooting. Oh, it was like, yeah, I, I read about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Others? Maida, anything? Maida? Nothing? Okay. Well, hi, Ginger. <laughs> Good to see you. Just say hi to each other. We haven't seen you since Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, you were here, I remember. Friends, let us join our hearts for prayer. Um, I'll invite you to just pause for a moment, pause for a moment on your own to reflect upon the words that you heard this morning and uh, what it means for us to be God's chosen people, that we bear the image and the imprints of God in our lives and all that we do. So let us pray. Holy God, in the stillness of silence, you call us. We come before you, focusing our minds and our hearts unto you and invite the Holy Spirit to continue to speak to us. We appreciate the, the privilege of being your chosen. We acknowledge that we are not our own, that we can't do whatever we want, that we are yours, that we, we are called to be your people. In all that we do, in all that we say, we bear your image, we bear this Im imprint in our lives, of your imprint in our lives. So we ask for our humility and to be your servant, not just on this day, but in, in the rest of in, in all of our lives, that we may bear your resemblance. Continue to work in our lives to be your people. 
Lord, we pray. We pray for the world around us that oftentimes that we feel not able to do whatever, not, not able to be a, feel safe. And um, we pray for the, the various incidents that happened this past week in, in terms of gun violence down in Atlanta and, and most recently yesterday in Texas. We pray for peace and we pray for the those who are carrying out these acts of evil around us. And, but more importantly, we just pray for humanity in general, that we may continue, that we may see one another as friends and that we can live peacefully with one another. We pray for justice to be served among those who may act it upon themselves and to do things that, that are irrational. We pray for the, the crimes around the city that oftentimes we may not feel safe, even just walking down our streets in our neighborhood. We pray for the, the families who are, that might be broken relationship that uh, that needs to be restored. We pray for healing upon those who are injured and sick and those who are recovering, those who are named and cherished in our hearts. We lift it up to you. All of this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time for our announcement. Um, so we have the uh, the offering in the back table. The, on your way out, please, uh, you may drop off the offering. Uh, we have two offerings this morning. One is for the regular offering, and one is for the uh, deacon's beneficence offering. So uh, please give generously as you can. Or you may continue to make the offering online as well. So later on, we will be uh, having a communion. So uh, for those who are at home, um, those who are at home, you may bring your own communion at, at your table as well. Um, today is, uh, I will ask uh, Ray and Amy to be the communion server. Okay. So please come forward during the communion hymn. Uh, for those who are on the session, uh, tomorrow we'll be having our regular meeting at 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, please check your email. I sent it out this morning and I sent it out this morning. So um, uh, along with the link and all the information that you need for the meeting. Uh, I think Amy will send that financial information as well. Uh, Wednesday Bible study will also meet uh, at, on Wednesday at 7.30. Uh, we are up to chapter nine and 10 this week. Um, so we have one, two more uh, chapters to go for before we move into the next, next book. So, so friends, let us collect our hearts as we prepare our hearts for the communion. Uh, let us sing hymn number 514. Come behold the feast of heaven. Five one four. Five one one. Oh, five one one. Okay, I'm sorry. The one looks like a four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Om be the peace of heaven. Hallelujah. Has the mortal blessing given. Hallelujah. Hear the words of God I bless. The banquet is prepared. All is ready for my hand. And the Lord's invited friend. Friends, welcome. Welcome to the Feast of Thanksgiving that our Lord Jesus Christ has prepared. We come not because we are righteous or holier than others. We come because we need God's saving grace as exhibited through God's love being poured out to us upon the cross. So come. Come just as you are, in faith and embraced by God's love. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For this is the day that, the, that you have made. O oh Lord, the first day of the week, when you created light out of darkness by the power of your word and spirit, when you created life out of death, raising Jesus from the grave. Throughout our lives, we have searched for this light in the midst of darkness. We have come to seek this risen Christ by our faith and not by our sight, as we proclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God, 
of majesty and blessed is Jesus Christ our Lord. We remember how he took bread. And after he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples. He broke it and said, Hey, see, this is my body. Broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is a new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and the wine, that the bread that we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. But we come as one people, one body in Christ, and we seek to exemplify your steadfast love and proclaim the saving grace of the good news of your salvation. Friends, these are symbols that remind us of who God is in God's presence among us. Let us partake them in confidence and in faith. Power, you don't have to do Power, you don't have to do that. Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for us. The cup of salvation. That's it. After Jesus, uh, on your way out, please take the cup with you and discard it. And so this way you don't have to touch the uh, no cup. Let us pray. Lead us, O God, by the power of your Spirit to live as love commands, bound to Christ, 
set us free for joyful obedience and service. As Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our life for others. With humility and persistent courage, give us strength to serve you faithfully through his perseverance in our lives. Amen. Let us now conclude our worship this morning by singing hymn number 463, How Firm a Foundation. Oh, how firm a foundation that is of the Lord it is laid for your faith in God's excellent work. What more can be said than to you, God has said to you who forever feels to Jesus have fled. Hear not, I am with thee, O thee, that this may for oh, I am thy God, and will still give thee day. How strength and season of thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. Oh, so that the waters I call thee to go, the rivers of sorrow shall not overflow. Oh, that be near, be thy troubles be blessed, and sanctify to be thy deepest distress. When through the trials I have, shall lie, thy grace or sufficient shall be thy supply. Thy shall not do, be thy only design, thy cross to consume, and thy goal to refine. The soul that on thee does have been for repose, I will not, I will not be served to dispose. That the soul goes to hell, should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Amen. Friends, may Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life be with you. May the Spirit empower you to serve in Christ's name. And may God, who raised Christ from the dead, keep you forever. And all God's people say, Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I'll be with you till we meet again. When life's terror sick, all fall in the arms of Christ you. God be with you till we meet again. Please be seated. Friends, may you have a blessed week and be a blessing to others. Goodbye. Have a great day.
Thank you for the sermon, Pastor. Thank you. 